Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Imagine standing on the deck of a modern ship, feeling the powerful hum beneath your feet as the vessel glides smoothly through the water. This sensation is made possible by one of the most critical, yet often overlooked, components of maritime engineering, the ship propeller. The propeller, with its seemingly simple design, is the culmination of centuries of innovation, trial and error, and the relentless pursuit of efficiency. But how did we arrive at the sophisticated high-performance propellers we use today? To answer that, we need to dive into the fascinating history of ship propulsion, exploring how the early days of manual and wind-powered vessels gradually gave way to the mechanically driven ships that dominate our oceans. Before the invention of the propeller, ships relied on two primary means of propulsion, manpower and wind. In ancient times, rowing was the main method for propelling ships, especially in calm seas or when maneuverability was crucial. Galleys powered by rows of oarsmen were a common sight in the Mediterranean, with the Greeks, Romans, and Egyptians all employing these vessels for trade, warfare, and exploration. However, rowing had its limitations, requiring enormous human effort and providing limited speed and range. To supplement or replace rowing, ancient mariners harnessed the wind through the use of sails. Sails allowed for longer voyages and reduced the need for human labor, but they were heavily dependent on the wind's direction and strength. The challenge of navigating when the wind was not in their favor led to the development of more complex rigging and sail configurations, but the limitations of wind power remained a significant obstacle. The transition from wind and muscle to mechanical propulsion began in the late 18th century with the advent of steam power. As the Industrial Revolution gained momentum, inventors started experimenting with ways to harness steam engines to propel ships. The earliest attempts involved paddle wheels, which were mounted on the sides of ships. These wheels were driven by steam engines, converting the engine's rotational motion into thrust. While paddle wheels were a significant improvement over sails and oars, they had their own set of drawbacks. The large exposed wheels were vulnerable to damage from rough seas, and their placement on the sides of the ship made them less efficient in terms of hydrodynamics. Additionally, paddle wheels had limited maneuverability and were less effective in shallow waters. The inefficiencies of paddle wheels led inventors to explore alternative methods of propulsion. Enter the screw propeller, a revolutionary design that would change maritime history forever. The screw propeller consists of a rotating shaft with blades that screw through the water, generating thrust. The concept was not entirely new. The idea of using a screw-like device to move through water had been suggested as early as the 17th century. However, it wasn't until the early 19th century that practical applications began to emerge. One of the earliest pioneers in propeller design was Swedish engineer John Ericsson, who, in the 1830s, developed a screw propeller that would later be used on the USS Princeton, the first warship powered by a screw propeller. Around the same time, British engineer Francis Pettit Smith independently developed a similar design and conducted the first successful sea trials on a ship called the Archimedes in 1839. The success of these early propeller-driven ships demonstrated the potential of this new technology, and it wasn't long before screw propellers began to replace paddle wheels as the preferred method of propulsion. Once the screw propeller became the standard for ship propulsion, the focus shifted to refining and optimizing its design. Engineers quickly realized that the shape, size, and pitch of the propeller blades significantly impacted the efficiency of the ship's propulsion system. The pitch of the blades, essentially the angle at which they cut through the water, became a critical factor in determining the propeller's performance. Early propellers often had a fixed pitch, meaning the blades were set at a specific angle that could not be adjusted. 
This design worked well for ships operating at a constant speed, but it was less effective for vessels that needed to operate efficiently at different speeds or under varying conditions. To address this limitation, engineers developed adjustable pitch propellers, which allowed the angle of the blades to be changed while the ship was in motion. This innovation provided greater flexibility and efficiency, particularly for ships that needed to operate at varying speeds. Another significant advancement was the development of the ducted propeller, or court nozzle, which encases the propeller in a cylindrical housing. The court nozzle helps to direct the flow of water over the propeller blades, improving thrust and reducing cavitation, a phenomenon where bubbles form around the propeller blades, leading to a loss of efficiency and potential damage to the propeller. As shipbuilding and maritime technology continued to evolve, so too did the demands on ship propulsion systems. The advent of faster, larger, and more powerful ships in the late 19th and early 20th centuries necessitated further innovations in propeller design. The rise of steam turbines and later diesel engines provided ships with unprecedented power, but also introduced new challenges for propeller design. High-speed propellers, capable of efficiently converting the enormous power generated by these engines into thrust, became a priority. One of the key developments during this period was the introduction of the four-bladed propeller, which offered a balance between efficiency and strength. While early propellers typically had two or three blades, the addition of a fourth blade provided greater thrust and stability, particularly for larger vessels. The shape of the blades also underwent significant changes, with engineers experimenting with different profiles to reduce drag and increase efficiency. The development of computer-aided design, CAD, in the mid-20th century further accelerated these advancements, allowing engineers to simulate and test various propeller designs before they were built and installed on ships. Today's ship propellers are marvels of engineering, designed to maximize efficiency while minimizing environmental impact. Modern propellers are typically made from high-strength materials such as stainless steel or nickel-aluminum-bronze alloys, which offer excellent resistance to corrosion and wear. The design process is highly sophisticated, with engineers using advanced software to model fluid dynamics and optimize blade shapes for specific vessels and operating conditions. One of the most significant trends in modern propeller technology is the push for greater fuel efficiency and reduced emissions. With the maritime industry facing increasing pressure to reduce its carbon footprint, there has been a renewed focus on developing more efficient propeller designs. This has led to the adoption of more advanced materials, such as composite propellers made from carbon fiber, which are lighter and more efficient than traditional metal propellers. Additionally, there has been a growing interest in the use of unconventional propeller designs, such as the contra-rotating propeller, which features two propellers mounted on the same shaft that rotate in opposite directions. This design helps to cancel out the rotational energy lost in a traditional single propeller system, leading to improved efficiency. The evolution of ship propellers is a testament to human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of improvement. From the early days of paddle wheels and simple screw designs to the advanced high-efficiency propellers of today, each step in this journey has been driven by the need to move ships more effectively through the water. As we look to the future, the challenges of climate change and the demand for sustainable maritime transport will undoubtedly continue to drive innovation in propeller technology. And while the basic principles of propeller design may remain unchanged, the materials, methods, and technologies used to create them will continue to evolve, ensuring that ships can navigate our oceans more efficiently and responsibly than ever before. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution.
Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.